Late one evening, the triad sends a message to Chief Surveyor Ola Oskarsson. This is the type of image he's been waiting for. The alarm is raised and everyone involved in the search is summoned to the ship. It takes a few hectic days to assemble key members of the expedition, rent more equipment and board the ship, which is in harbour after its discovery. Okay. The night of June 15, 2003 is the most nerve-wracking during the entire search period. One more failure will probably mean the end, not just of this expedition, but of all organized searching for the DC-3 and its crew. In the middle of the short summer night, the triad drops anchor. The position is almost exactly between Sweden and what was once the Baltic coast of the Soviet Union, 32 nautical miles east of the small island of Gotska Sander. Yeah, but that... If you look at the views... You can't be mislukas now. It must be the right object. All clear on that. It's extremely hard if it wasn't, I think. For the Baltic, it's relatively deep here, 125 meters. Robots and cameras are needed to establish the truth. Have they actually succeeded where everyone else failed? It's a little nervous. It's very nervous, actually. Det är en rätt viktig stund som närmar sig nu. Va? Fem års forskning här och så kommer vi få se på några sekunder vad, vad det var. Ja, vad det är, va? Men nu är frågan om det är rätt DC3, eller hur? Målad aluminium. Ja, det var ju rätt färg på den också. Mm. Där är bubblan. Stilla. Där! Oh, oh. Råda bubblan! Yes! <laughs> Finding the wreck was the big hurdle to overcome. But finding a wreck is not the same as finding the truth. The fate of the eight airmen is still a mystery to be unraveled. <laughs> 